Well, there's uh, been a lot that's been done over the course of the last week. In fact, over the course of the last couple of days, um, everybody is aware of the fact that Parliament was recalled on Tuesday and a multi-billion dollar economic package was uh, passed by the House of Commons. Um, and the hope now is that, uh, you know, people will start seeing money uh, come to them uh, rather uh, quickly. Um, I know that so far we've had uh, at the federal government level a million employment insurance claims that have come forward. That number is uh, expected to rise exponentially. And so, you know, you can understand the magnitude of what's going on here and the anxiety that people are feeling, uh, making sure that they have enough money to meet their obligations. And I know that given the magnitude of the situation, uh, you know, it's all hands on deck in Ottawa. Uh, the government is reallocating resources, human resources from departments to try to make sure that people are, uh, you know, who are uh, putting in their claims, uh, get their money as quick as possible. But again, you know, I've been talking to a lot of people over the last couple of days since this package came forward, uh, really trying to, uh, you know, to ensure that we get the money to them as quick as possible. But again, the magnitude of this, uh, uh, and I think people really have to, I've said this many times, temper their expectation that they may not necessarily get this money in the next week or two, uh, but they can be assured that everything is being done to try to expedite and get money into the hands of people's, uh, people's uh, pockets as soon as they can so that they can meet their obligations. Now, um, there are uh, very simple uh, ways that people can help themselves uh, ensure that uh, they do have quick uh, access to this money. Uh, anybody that's calling our office, we're telling them to make sure that they open up an online account through the Canada Revenue Agency or through Service Canada. That will be the quickest way for anybody to apply for the emergency support benefit that was part of the bill that was passed the other night. And, um, you know, if anybody needs the addresses, we can certainly provide them to them through our office at 705-726-5959. But we are directing everybody uh, who is in need of uh, the emergency benefit fund to go online and apply through Service Canada or through the Canada Revenue Agency uh, My Account uh, website. And so uh, all of that information is available on my website, johnbroussard.com. We're making it available through our social media sites uh, at John Broussard CPC. So if you need that information, call my office. You can email my office or go to our social media and uh, websites as well. Uh, there's been uh, other news at the federal level. The health minister has invoked the Quarantine Act for anybody coming back to Canada from any other destination, including the United States. The Quarantine Act uh, allows for 14 days of mandatory self-isolation. Uh, so in other words, if you arrive at Pearson Airport, the expectation is you're going to go directly home. You're not going to stop at grocery stores or gas stations or any other place that you may think about stopping and self-isolate for 14 days. The same is applicable to land border crossings as well. Uh, people are expected and they'll be directed by the CBSA agents to uh, go home uh, directly and not stop. And if you do need supplies, make sure uh, that somebody, a family member, a friend uh, is able to pick up those supplies uh, for you. I've had a lot of conference calls over the last week, not just with the leadership team of the Conservative Party, uh, but also uh, locally, uh, video conferences, webinars, uh, which have included the Chamber of Commerce, uh, business uh, leaders, uh, the mayors of both Barrie and Innisville, uh, and uh, uh, Barrie Springwater or Medante MP Doug Shipley and I have been involved. Um, I've been talking a lot in the last couple of days to local suppliers who are looking to engage and get involved in the supply chain to help 
with uh, medical supplies for the COVID-19 uh, crisis that's going on in this country. And so those discussions have been very, very helpful. And we've been able to direct a lot of businesses to the appropriate agencies, whether it's Health Canada or uh, some of the small business agencies uh, that they can help with. The other issue that we've been dealing with is repatriation. I mentioned that briefly earlier, but repatriation flights of uh, Barry Innisville residents that are stuck abroad. Uh, the Foreign Affairs uh, Department has uh, uh, indicated that flights have started, and they have, to Peru. There's uh, Guatemala and Ecuador today, and other flights are planned this week. The best thing that anybody who is stuck uh, abroad right now can do is to make sure they register with consular and, and embassy officials in the country that they're in, because they will get notification of the flights, and they can do that uh, through SOS at International dot gc dot ca and so again all of that information is available on our social media sites as well as our website jobbersard.com again uh, we are uh, in the middle of a situation where we don't want this virus to spread and public health agencies and the public health agency of canada have been advising people to uh, distance themselves in a social manner, uh, to not get within six feet of uh, other people. And if you're feeling ill um, and you're showing signs and symptoms, headaches or throat, coughing, sweating, uh, all of that stuff to make sure that you self-isolate. And it's, it's important not just for yourself, but also because you may, if you are uh, positive with the COVID-19 virus, uh, why run the risk and uh, you know of spreading this uh, through community transition? So we're really asking people uh, to follow very simple steps, self-isolate, social distance, wash your hands on a regular basis. And you know if you do know people that are in that position, uh, you know you can help them out, especially seniors who are shut in and others within the community by picking up supplies for them. I know, you know, and I mentioned this the last time I was on, I'm self-isolating for 14 days. We're eight days into it right now. And my daughter, who is not with us uh, for the reason that we're self-isolating, she's been out getting us supplies, uh, groceries and and day-to-day -day, uh, living, uh, living things that we need. So, uh, and just leaving them on the porch. She's telling us uh, from a distance that uh, she's bringing them, but this is the kind of thing that we can do uh, to help. So really follow the advice of uh, the medical professionals, the Simcoe Muskoka District Health Board, the uh, Public uh, Health Agency of Canada and the Royal Victoria Hospital are, are incredible resources uh, to help you understand what you need to do in order to prevent and uh, restrict the spread of uh, the virus within our community. And lastly, I'll say, and I'll open up to your, uh, some of your questions, uh, there's a tremendous amount of information that is available online. Make sure that you're getting the right information. Canada.ca website, my website, jobbersard.com, some of our social media sites. And, you know, unfortunately in situations when there are crises that hit, uh, you know, countries like ours, there are scam artists that are out there and fraudsters who will prey on vulnerable people, people that are showing a tremendous amount of anxiety. And, you know, we have to make sure that we're aware of that and that we protect ourselves from that. So uh, if somebody calls you up asking for information, personal information, or any other information, uh, you know, you don't have to give it to them. And you can find out, get their number, call them back, uh, call our office, 705-726-5959. We'll call them back to make sure that, uh, you know, it's, it's a legitimate uh, concern that people are bringing to your attention. But unfortunately, there are a lot of scammers and a lot of fraudsters that are out there who are preying on uh, people that are anxious right now and vulnerable. You know, one of the things that we have been really focused on as an opposition is to give the government the tools that they need in a minority situation, I'll remind you, to deal with this crisis. Because at the end of the day, our concern is for Canadians and uh, employers uh, and making sure that Canadians are looked after throughout this crisis. Uh, so when the Prime Minister announced a, uh, a package last week 
Immediately, uh, we knew that there was going to be legislation required in order to pass the type of stimulus that uh, the Prime Minister was talking about, which again, as I said, multi-billions of dollars. Um, and so uh, we really worked well with the government to make sure that we were able to bring Parliament back quickly and deal with the issue quickly in the legislation. Um, now, it's well documented that there were some issues that came up. Uh, there were things in the bill that, uh, quite frankly, uh, Conservatives and the NDP, for that matter, and the Bloc didn't uh, expect in the bill. We expected that we were going to uh, pass a uh, stimulus bill that would get money flowing to where it was needed to Canadians. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, government inserted uh, what I can only describe as, as a, a power grab, which gave them unfettered uh, access to uh, not just uh, tax as much as they want, to spend as much as they want, uh, but also to borrow as much as they want uh, for a period of two years. And so uh, never before has this type of power grab happened in uh, Canada's history. And so you can understand that after a week of, of working with the government to make sure that Parliament came back to pass a bill quickly, a spending bill quickly, uh, it was quite um, disconcerting and quite upsetting to us and the other opposition parties that the government would use this crisis in an attempt to grab as much power as what uh, the certain sections of the bill had asked for. And so rightly, we uh, opposed that, as did the NDP and the Bloc did initially, uh, because we thought it was too much. And it had never happened before. So why, during this crisis, would it need to happen? And so after hours of negotiation, literally, uh, I think it was 15 hours of negotiation from the time that the bill was, uh, was supposed to be passed, and it could have been done very, very quickly, had uh, what we understood to be in the bill actually been in the bill and not all these additional uh, sections of the bill for this, uh, this, this power grab by the government, uh, it literally could have been done within minutes. But, uh, you know, we've got to protect our democracy. Uh, we are a, a parliamentary de democracy that has uh, uh, worked for 152 years. The opposition parties exist for a reason, and that is to ensure that um, uh, we make the uh, government accountable. Uh, but more importantly, uh, you know, I'm elected as a member of parliament because uh, I represent the riding of Barry Innisville in the House of Commons. And under parliamentary uh, 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 rules, there is no represent uh, taxation without representation. And if we are to increase any amounts of spending or borrowing, uh, and the government feels that uh, they need to bring that to the House of Commons in Parliament, then it has to be approved or not by political parties. And so at the end of the day, uh, you know, the government stepped back a lot on the uh, type of power that they were looking for uh, because of the fact that we weren't going to support the legislation, frankly, in the manner in which it was written. So a lot of those sections that uh, called for this power grab were pulled back by the government. And listen, look, we can recall Parliament any time. If the government feels that there's need to spend more money in this crisis, the government, you know, the government can call back Parliament, and we prove just how quickly Parliament can be called back. It can literally be called back within 24 hours uh, and have Ontario and Quebec MPs drive to Ottawa, not have to get on any airplanes. We can do that very, very quickly. And uh, the other thing that we did too is uh, make sure that the Finance Committee and the Health Committee uh, have the ability to be constituted as a result of uh, this piece of legislation because there are lots of uh, questions that can be asked uh, within the Finance Committee about the appropriation of funds as well as the Health Committee in terms of the public health emergency that's going on right now and whether in fact uh, we are uh, doing as much as we need to do to ensure the health and safety of Canadians. And so, uh, you know, frankly, it was uh, really disturbing when we saw this and, and I was quite uh, quite disturbed, and I know based on the reaction that I received from many, not just in the community, but across Canada, people were concerned that the Prime Minister of the country would use this crisis 
uh, as an opportunity to grab more power than what he needed. Because we've given the government through not just uh, this spending, but also the potential of future spending, a very long runway and a wide field in which to operate. And they, uh, they have the funds that they feel they need now in order to uh, deal with this crisis and make sure that we help Canadians um, that, uh, that need the help the most, and including employers as well, who obviously are suffering, suffering as a result of downturns, uh, not just downturns, significant downturns in our economy. So uh, that's what happened. And, uh, you know, fortunately, the opposition was there to uh, push back and to make the government realize that they didn't need this type of power in order for our democratic institution of parliament to work and for the opposition to be effective. And one thing that, uh, you know, is important to me is that we are the official opposition. We're not an audience for this government. And we need to uh, push back as we did on behalf of Canadians to make sure that our democratic institutions are protected and that no single party has as much power as they think they need. Um, you know, one of the concerns that we had uh, with this bill that was introduced, uh, the Economic Measures Bill, is that there wasn't enough for small business uh, to be able to look after their employees. Because in the bill, the government uh, has allocated a 10% wage subsidy to employers to pay for a portion of uh, their employee costs and salaries. And, you know, we've heard from many local businesses, the Canadian Federation of Independent Business, the Canadian and Ontario Chamber of Commerce, that that wasn't nearly enough. And so we tried to get the government to um, up that uh, to 50% wage subsidy, because at the end of the day, employers want to keep their people on the payroll. We don't want you know, again, when I talk about the the numbers, we've had a million people who've applied for employment insurance just in the last week alone, and that number is expected to rise three or fourfold over the coming weeks. Uh, I think what we should have been focused on, frankly, in this bill is to make sure that we give employers the tools and the mechanisms they need in order to keep people on the payroll and not transfer four million people over to the employment insurance system. Now what's happening is we've got this big shift over to the employment insurance system. Uh, millions of people are applying. We don't have the resources of government to deal with it. So my fear, frankly, is that the weight uh, of, of what's coming is going to collapse the system and people are going to be further delayed in receiving the type of help and support they need to meet their obligations. And that's a really critical part of this whole component. Had they been left on the payroll and government had provided that incentive through increased wage subsidies, then there wouldn't be that delay for people to meet their obligations. And when I talk about obligations, I'm talking about the things that they need in order to survive on a day in and day out basis. And I'm already hearing from people who you know, don't have the money to buy groceries. They're not going to be able to meet their debt obligations. And so, you know, make, making sure that it was seamless and, and, and helping employers help their employees would have been a much better way to deal with this system. Is it personal? Yeah, because I'm, I'm dealing with these stories. And it's not just personal for me as well. My staff uh, who are in my office here in Barry Ennisville, and I have a minimum of three every day answering these type of questions on behalf of people and employers. And, and you know, obviously, I'm, I'm talking to a lot of people as well uh, uh, who, uh, you know, want to personally talk to me. I'm calling everybody back. Uh, they're feeling the anxiety as well because they can sense the anguish of people who are calling our offices. And, uh, um, you know, we're trying, we are trying to, believe me, my staff, like, I raise them up to godlike status now because of the work that they've been doing. Uh, and I, I had a lot of respect for them before, but they are just uh, doing a tremendous amount of work to, to guide people through the uncertainty of the crisis that's going on to make sure that they understand what's available to them and how they can get it for their family.